So throughout today's conference, we'll be taking a critical look at the future of television. To do that, we have assembled some of the true luminaries in the industry, those experts and leaders who are defining the next stage of television's development and who are helping to create TV Next. Shows aren't just being created anymore on the lot or just with the writers and producers. It's now a complete marketing, promotional, social effort. The fun of it all right now is finding ways um, to expand the world uh, of the storytelling and to, to make it bigger than, um, than just that one hour. And we know people are sitting in front of their TVs with other devices. Um, so there, there's this power there that you can reach people beyond the broadcast beyond the TV. If you've ever been on Twitter and wondered where in the world are these trending topics coming from, 106 in Park is the answer. It's a, it's a constant dialogue with our audience, but really a new programming channel for us. Um, and, and what we're finding, the real impact we're seeing it, it is, is huge. We allow what we call the trendsetters to submit potential trending topics to us, potential hashtags. Uh, we vet them and then push out the top three, and then our actual audience votes on who is going to be the trending topic of the day. We've reached kind of a new TV Next um, level or record of tweets. We're at over um, 1,700 tweets right now and about 21 million social impressions. How do we integrate brands into the social experience? We need to reach this audience because of how highly engaged they are, and it's a new frontier. We need to be there. How do you? make these things organic to the show? How do you make the show better by having applications and social media attached to it? You have to find your voice for your brand and your programs and play appropriately. I wanted to talk about how we integrated Pedigree, the dog food brand, into uh, our Puppy Bowl Twitter experience. Because we had created this story that so many people were following on Twitter, you know, we could mention the brand and make the brand feel integral to uh, what we were doing with Puppy Bowl. There was talk about clutter, are we cluttering um, uh, the, the TV environment? Are people gonna, going to say, like, there, there shouldn't be brands in my social stream? And what we're seeing is that the best success comes when brands engage a few best practices. Number one, it's an invitation, not an interruption. creativity and their science and much of what's happening in social TV may may be more valuable on the creative side of things. There were also tweet battles where uh, people would challenge each other via Twitter on everything from Beverly winner or loser to queso or no, fans would vote and debate and all these posts were constantly going out in the social sphere. Getting somebody to sort of go off on a tangent talking about a brand to make it personalized like you, you can't buy that. But this has proved to me that social conversation can really drive scale. And that week, Last Chance Kitchen trended worldwide. Like, I mean, a digital series. When you get that core group of people who are engaged with your brand and or your show to tweet, it actually reaches a very big population of people who are just on Twitter and Facebook to consume. We're trying to solve very complex problems. There are certain types of shows that drive conversation and certain types of shows that do not. Soccer <laughs> conversation is out of control. I'd like to know what makes a man do that. Audiences create these guidelines by what they choose to watch. Artists need to be in a position to, to sort of push the boundaries and let the audience speak back to them. Quality is what matters. Quality is the one differentiator. Audiences can have more and more choices. Quality is the ultimate differentiator. Quality really matters. There's no substitute on television for great storytelling, 
particularly when that story has not been seen or heard before. voice prompt comes up that says Xbox tweet to share this music video with your friends on Twitter. See a moderate increase in recall and we actually see preference go back up to the single screen experience. If you think about that two-way connection into the home, we're really just at the cusp of over the singular device on the wall, taking full advantage of all of the opportunities that exist. In some ways, social TV has really become a second screen type of thing. So our value proposition is letting people continue that engagement and turn a 30 second spot into a two or three or five minute engagement with somebody who's literally raised their hand, because if you, any of you use Shazam, you know you hold your phone up in the air when you Shazam. Literally hold your phone up to the screen to engage with your brand. Take that experience with you. Engage with it you know, when I want to, where I want to. And you know, we're doing that today, and we're doing it at a scale, like uh, Rick from ABC said, you know, that comes close to matching TV. The story explodes when you're willing to think bigger and think in layers. Let's be gone the days of the TV people and the digital people, and please, let's work together from the onset. It's such a new frontier that no, one, uh, no one's really figured it out. It sounds funny to say, but I think we're kind of in the dark ages right now. Um, but if there's one key takeaway we want you to take from today is that there really needs to be a new planning model uh, for TV. The future of this is really content co-creation so that you can become a part of the story. Power of TV is really its ability to be whatever we want it to be.